suppose here's a, I love this video, here's a young guy who thought that his mother's boyfriend was cheating on her, so he followed her around with a video camera, caught the mother's boyfriend with the new girlfriend and put it up on YouTube with the words, Shane's mom's boyfriend, Shane's mom's mistress. And by the way, it's not even enough if you die. There is now a social networking site for dead people. Put up, put up by the guy who did Monster. Honest to God, I sent him an email. I said, I have a brilliant name for you. You should call it Deadster. No response. I don't know why. But I really did send them that email. Now, <laughs> consensual, willing, insane, inexplicable release of personal data. I give you exhibit A, PMS buddy. You want to know when to take that road trip you've been planning? <laughs> Guys, you want to know when it's a dangerous time of the month for you to be at home? Well, pmsbuddy.com. <laughs> and, and wait, wait, it's new. Remember I told you about Facebook likes? You can now link PMS Buddy with your Facebook page. <laughs> Guys, God, I, I'm not making this up. I'm not making this up. Just, just freaking look it up for yourself. You all are insane. As an investigator, God bless you, but you all are nuts. Now, just so you know, every insurance policy, every insurance claim, it's in MIB or ISO, or in InsureNet, whether or not you have insurance. Every time you open a bank account, they say, wait a second, I have to run something. You think they're running it through the FDIC? Eh. They're running it. I don't know if you can read that up there. They're running it through Experian, one of the credit bureaus. So here is a sample Experian report. I've got your name. I've got your social security number. I've got your date of birth. I've got where you work. I've got where your spouse works. And I've got here on the bottom every credit card and every bank account that you have. Anytime I want this, 11 bucks. Here's an example of data being sucked down in ridiculous ways. You go to a bar, they say, give me your driver's license, they scan it, they put it under a video camera. Everybody here has experienced that. What you don't know is, as part of, maybe not this one, but as part of the rental or lease agreement or sale deal with these, every one of those license plate scans goes back to the mothership. Not only do they have all, all your license plate info, they know how often you drink. They know where you drink. They know what time of day you go out, and so on and so forth. Now, I want to digress on this. When I talked about this in 2008, some weaselly shill for Domino's Pizza put up a, a uh, posting saying, Rambam couldn't provide a copy of the Domino's database. No, I don't have a copy of the Domino's database. But I did say that they share it with law enforcement, as does Papa John's, as does Gino's Pizza, as does everyone else. And I have to tell you, I stick by that. And by the way, here's a sample bill that I used in a case, which I got by checking the database and then going to the pizzeria. Rambam's first law, me, me of course being Rambam, is whatever data you put out there will eventually be used for an unintended purpose. Once you put it out there, it's gone. And eventually it will be sucked into something else. Pizza purchases, perfect example. You use your cell phone, you have a pizza delivered to the halfway in motel in Ronkonkoma, Long Island, the U.S. Marshals are looking for you. They go to the halfway in motel in Ronkonkoma, <laughs> Long Island, to the room where your pizza was delivered to, and you're busted. And I have personally, I can tell you, 
I can tell you Domino's, I can tell you Domino's shill who wrote that blog, I've personally seen it happen. And by the way, if that's not enough, Domino's and TiVo. You can pull up a Domino screen on TiVo's right now. 30 minutes guaranteed delivery, click on pepperoni on your TiVo, comes to your house, wherever you are, if there's a TiVo. You can get Papa John's via your PS3. Perfect example, secure flight, how you paid 95 bucks a year and you gave them everything, including your biometrics. Secure flight went out of business, but all that informa information you gave about them, now it gave to them, now in a marketing database. This is a scary thing. I talk about gay lifestyle a lot when I give this lecture, not because I'm opposed to gay lifestyle, I really couldn't care less, but because a lot of people really are in the closet. A lot of people don't want their sexual orientation known. Here is a magazine that solicited subscribers among essentially young guys in the closet, teenagers, young 20s, very vulnerable people. They have millions and millions of records and website hits and subscription thing, their entire history. Well, the magazine went bankrupt. So now marketing companies are gonna be bidding on their sole remaining asset, their database. Oh well, let's talk about your purchases. Affiliation cards, loyalty cards. I wanna just give you one example. Stop and Shop started a database called, stupidly, Smart Mouth. Stop and Shop said, we are going to sell to HMOs your shopping history, so they can do underwriting on your health insurance plans based on your shopping history. You buy a couple of six packs a week, you buy a lot of fatty foods, you get the, the jumbo Larry the Cable Guy size bag of pork rinds every week. I can assure you that your uh, premiums are gonna go up. The uproar was so ferocious they killed the program. But that's an example of what's possible. Unintended use of info. Now let's talk about tracking you down. Second holy grail of an investigator. Where is he? Where is she? Where can I physically find them 24 seven? This is the old way. Every time you boot up a, a, a Microsoft program, it reported to the mothership. Is this an authorized program? Is this a bootleg version? And obviously reported your location. Apple Tunes iStore always reports to the mothership. Windows Media Player, hey, you go on uh, the Pirate Bay and you download the wrong video <laughs> and it'll say, sorry, you can't play this in QuickTime. You need to download Windows Media Player to play it. Well, it reports your IP address and also that you're looking at a bootleg copy of, uh, of Restrepo or something like that. These programs are designed to report back to the mothership. Even your we reports what you're doing, how long you did it for, where you did it from, if it's a networked game, who you networked the game with. OnStar. How many people believe that OnStar is off just because you didn't pay for it. It's on 24 seven. There are cases in the Southern District of New York where the FBI had OnStar turned on so they could track a car and use the mic in the car. They got a warrant to do that. Don't believe me, send me an email, I'll send you the court documents. My email will be up at the end of this. Passenger list, car cheap, digital license plate readers, Unique serial numbers embedded in everything, in every photo, in every piece of hardware, in every disk that you burn. Current GPS satellites as they're being upgraded, right now between GPS satellites and Skyhook, I can tell where you are somewhere between 10 and 100 feet in, in New York. That's gonna be down to inches in some areas. 
Cell phones are one of the three biggies. GPS Skyhook, Skyhook is a company that went around and for five years recorded the location of every browser, every wireless node, and signal strength. So if my iPhone says that I am two bars away from browser, from, from uh, router one, two, three, four, five, and four bars away from you know, wireless node four, five, six, seven, eight, it can tell where I am within feet, within feet. I'm not even gonna go into trigger fish, we're running late, but basically I can trick your phone into thinking that I'm a cell tower. So you can report your location and give up info. And the phone companies are unembarrassed to tell you about this. You can turn on your kid's locator. You can have your kid track 24-7 and report to your website. MapQuest has plugins. AOL has plugins. There are services like MoloGoGo. By the way, PIs buy a cell phone with MoloGoGo on it. They put it in an otter box with a couple of magnets. They stick it under your car, and it reports everywhere your car goes because it's totally anonymous. You find that thing under there, you can't track it back to the PI. A little bit of PI secrecy. Doesn't matter if I tell you, you're not gonna be checking for it. Suckers. <laughs> <laughs> Apple phone. Apple uses GPS and Skyhook. With, with an iPhone, I can tell where you are within feet. I can tell not just that you're in this room, but who's sitting around you. I can tell who you have dinner with in a restaurant. And not only that, because of programs that index every address and every business and every residence by GPS, I can tell remotely whose house you're in, what restaurant you're in, if it's a strip club, if it's an abortion clinic. I can tell all of that against your will. Here's examples. Expre there's a mall. There's a parking lot. Navtech is one of the best examples. I spoke about this at the last one, at the last talk, worth mentioning again. A buddy of mine in Israel developed a program called RABI. R-A-A-B-I. Stands for, I always forget this, Relationship and Activity Analysis and Behavior Informant. What that does is it follows your cell phone. It tells me you're here, so-and-so was there with you. It tells me you spent an hour in a strip club. It tells me you met Cynthia in a restaurant. It tells me that you were moving around at three in the morning. It tells me everything I want to know about you. You guys need to know, the and, and this line here, the cell phone is a little snitch in your pocket. This screen is from 2008. You know, <laughs> Newsweek, God bless their little plagiarizing heart, stole that exact quote for an article. Cell phones, the little snitch in your pocket. Gee, they thought that up themselves. Reports the location and activities of a subject, behavior patterns and associates. Here's an example. Let's look at a sample thing. Now, by the way, Italian mob guys are the only people without a civil rights group, so that's why we're using them. <laughs> at, at, at 3 p.m., Vinny and Cheech separately arrive at Don Vito Lasagna Social Club. 15 minutes later, Don Vito shows up. What does that tell you? Somebody in there picked up the phone and said, uh, Don Vito, your four o'clock has arrived. Following Don Vito's arrival, Eddie the Hook, Tommy One-Eye and Bobby the Butcher depart the social club. They're shown within 100 feet of the router in Spanky's Boom Boom Lounge. What happened? Don Vito said, you guys get out of here. Go down to the strip club. I got to talk to these guys. At 4 o'clock, Eddie and Tommy and Bobby return to the club and Vinny and Cheech leave. What does that mean? Meeting's over. The guys in the strip club can come back. 2.25 a.m. the next morning, Vinny and Cheech are shown visiting Pier 99 for an hour. Also present, a few feet away, at Pier 99 is Eduardo the Mule, the Mule Ruiz, identified by his SIM card. 
Obviously, Eduardo the Mule is a drug mule. Two days later, undercover narcotics officers begin to notice the availability of a new type of Colombian cocaine in the territory controlled by Don Lasagna. Guys, this is, this is real. This is an example, but even more intense uses are happening every day. Every day. This is a ridiculous example, but this is doable. Easily doable. I can watch your cell phone. I can see who you hang out with, who you care about. Not just because you talk to them, duh. You know, you make a call to Cynthia. An hour later, your cell phone and Cynthia's cell phone are in your apartment all night. Okay, the computer says, booty call, booty call. I mean, come on. <laughs> Here's a US program that came out. US, USA counterpart, it's called Nomad. Look at what they say, ability to profile target behavior. Rules engines to extract patterns and known identifiers, easy to use. Not assume technical genius. It applies to a lot of FBI agents. Here's an example, profiling a target. Shows the cell phones they use, the SIMs they use, even if they swap out locations they go to, the email addresses they use, what they do, their landline phones, ridiculous. Compares telecom's behavior of target with other known behaviors. They fingerprint you. And I gotta tell you guys, it's really easy to do. Searches for deviations in normal behavior. Well, first you go to a Home Depot where you make a purchase of a shovel. <laughs> then you're seen in the park in the middle of the night uh, for four hours. Following which, your girlfriend's cell phone goes dark. <laughs> Very hard to figure out. You can tell if a target has passed this phone on to somebody else. Why? The behavior of the user changes dramatically. Your cell phone is a fingerprint of who you are. Here is an actual honest to goodness screen. Shows everywhere you've gone, everything you've done, related IP addresses, related physical addresses, everything. This is the information they publicly release. Now by the way, for a test, they ran a billion records a day for seven days. That's a test. Imagine what they do if you pay the money. And by the way, there's a new federal term for those of you that are doing things that you shouldn't. If you are described as being part of a community of interest, it's not a romantic term. It means a grouping of users who generate a majority of their traffic and calls to other members of the group. Traffic is defined as a quantitative measurement of the total measurement of blah, 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 sis, boom, ba. It means if you're talking to three mob guys all the time, they start watching you. Here's an example, actual anonymized example. Oh, by the way, hilarious thing, this program, this analysis program, the honest to God name is called guilt by association. <laughs> Nobody's trying to hide what they're doing. And here, financial activity extrapolated out. Here is relationships and financial activity. And the guy in the middle, that's Don Vito Lasagna, or whoever he really is. Now, by the way, real world, <laughs> there was a terrorist in Milan, beautiful Milano. He didn't go there for La Scala, he went there to recruit bad people. And his name was Hassan Mustafa Osama Nasser. If you doubt he's a terrorist, now you know for sure. Or at least the CIA thought. So they watched this guy, they said, oh, he's meeting with bad people, he's going to the wrong mosque. They sent a bunch of CIA guys there, 26 people. I'm a colleague of these people, so it embarrasses me to say they went there with consecutive driver's license numbers, all phony IDs, consecutive driver's license numbers, all from certain locations in Virginia and Maryland. They went there with, God help us, consecutive Amex numbers. They went there with consecutive cell phone numbers. 
So what happens? A van screeches up. Four guys jump out, stick a needle in Mr. Nasser's neck. Mr. Nasser goes limp. They throw him in the van. Off they go. Nasser later magically shows up in Egypt. The US government is very good for outsourcing things, including torture. This is called an extraordinary rendition in Fed Talk, which means we are going to have somebody torture the crap out of you. We're just not allowed to do it ourselves, but our friends in Egypt or Pakistan will do it for us. So they ship him off. Eventually, even the Egyptians realize this guy's just some poor schmuck. They send him back to Italy. He walks into a police station and he goes, I want to tell you what happened to me. The Italian police check it out, and what do they do? When his cell phone disappears, they check and they see all the cell phones that are in the area. They find four of the CIA agent cell phones. Ha ha, not so hard. Then they see who those cell phones are calling. Then they see what hotels those cell phones are in. Then they check the consecutive credit card numbers, and lo and behold, Milan's anti-terrorism prosecutor, a very smart guy, Bruno Megali, within about 30 days, he has the identities of 26 CIA guys, I'm ashamed to say, all of whom have been now convicted in absentia for kidnapping and torture and all sorts of things. So why do they track your cell phone? Because they want to invade your privacy? Because they want to kidnap you from Milan? No, because people want to sell you things. Here's an example. They know you like Chinese food. It's lunchtime. You're around the corner from a Chinese restaurant they got to deal with. Beep, 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 a 20% off coupon for Big Wong's. That's an actual restaurant in New York, by the way. 20%, it is, honest to God, it's on Mott Street, right near Canal. 20% off coupon for Big Wong's appears on your cell phone. Stop, make a left, go 100 yards, eat. We know you like uh, Mugu Gai Pan, and this will give you 20% off. You go to a foreign country a lot, it's good for law enforcement, but it's also good for selling your tickets. Where do you spend time, your activities? Here's an actual, <clears throat> an actual example. Everyone is in a, this is, this is from a marketing quote. Everyone is in an arms rate to race to find out more and more about the users. For example, you know from smartphone usage that someone is 27 years old male, a New England Patriots fan from NFL.com, plays blackjack, on the net, travels frequently between New York and Boston on weekdays, GPS and phone usage, and uses an iPhone. That would make him attractive to a host of advertisers like airlines, a Las Vegas hotel, and by the way, poker outfits, and you know, Fung Wah bus company and all of that. Not hard to figure out. And by the way, you always have your cell phone with you. Somebody wants to make a weasel sales call to your phone and you've opted in and you've all opted into something without realizing it. Hi, we'd like to sell you a pizza. You're, you're always home because it's in your pocket. The only way that you can do that is to turn your cell phone off. Do you have a cell phone? Who has an iPhone? Okay, take the battery out of your iPhone, please. <laughs> oh, wait, I'm sorry, you can't do that. Guys, Steve Jobs and Apple are hardware geniuses. I admit it, they're brilliant. Why the hell did they make a phone where you can't change the battery? Think about that. Okay, some people are scratching their heads or other parts of their bodies, I'll tell you. It's so you can't turn the phone off. It's so they know what you're doing 24 seven. And by the way, if you check, you will see you cannot go dark with an iPhone. The only way you can do that is put it in one of those old film safe bags and close it up. Now, having said that, Steve Jobs recognizes that, and this is a Google statistic. See, Android doesn't beat you up. Google doesn't beat you up. They know from their own stats, 71% of all cell phone users have never turned their cell phone off. 70, I'll say that again because it amazes me. 71% of all cell phone users have never turned off their cell phone. Apple, Apple doesn't have a Google search, doesn't have a blog search. It's going with what it has, which is it has an incredibly functional phone 
that most of the people in this room carry, and they own you because of that phone. Let's look at some of these programs. Barista, why go to a coffee shop when your iPhone can teach you how to make espresso at home? Guarantee you're gonna get coffee sales ads. Cellfire, free mobile coupons and discount offers from local merchants. It's gonna follow where you are. If you opt in, if you have that program, pizza coupons are gonna pop up when you walk past the pizza store. Compare me. $1.99 is a 14-ounce carton of juice for $3.24, a better deal than a 12-ounce carton for $2.95. Hey, that's real, that's real handy. But what it tells them is what you're buying and what you're interested in. Find an apartment. Search millions of rental properties from leading apartments. I mean, come on, do I need to interpret this? Everything that you use the phone for can be extrapolated out to something significant. Now, like this, this is all stuff concerning your finances and you're doing business with companies. Mint.com, QuickSheet, so on and so on and so forth. Why? Well, you may ask yourself, why did Apple spend $765 million for a mobile advertising company and why did they in inaugurate iAds with, with, I won't say something about how he looks like Satan, but Think about that. Apple buys voice search startup Siri, aiming squarely at Google. Why? Everybody who has an iPhone uses Apple Mail. If that mail, or, or I'm sorry, everybody that has Apple Mail also uses voicemail. If it can send your voicemail to your, to your text, to, to a text message. If it can send voicemail to your email address, it knows who you are, it has your email address, it can mark it to you, and it reads your voicemail messages into text. It knows what people are saying to you. It's another window into your soul. Now, is it incredibly convenient for you that you don't have to check your voicemail? And it says, Dolores, this is Bob. I'm gonna be 20 minutes late for Licavoli's Pizza. Yeah, it's really helpful. But now, iAds knows you eat at Licavoli's Pizza. Safari 5, wonderful that it strips out ads, that it blocks pop-ups, that it makes the browsing experience better, less intrusive, except for the intrusion by Apple. Nobody will be able to serve you ads if you use Safari 5 and later, except for Apple. They're doing something nice for you, but you always got to say, who benefits? Those of you who are attorneys here, who benefits? That's a phrase you need to know. New privacy policy. New privacy policy lets Apple collect, share, and share iPhone's users' precise locations. Use an iPhone, you're screwed. You have no choice. That's the privacy policy. Why? They want to sell you stuff. Not because they really care that you're in a strip club, but they want to sell you stuff that their marketing techniques know they sell to strip clubs. Just thought I'd put that up there. <laughs> you know what movie that's from. But this is, of course, applicable to the iPhone. And here are some things that gobble up your privacy. Cell phone is a loyalty card. Cell phone is a payment device happening now. Cell phone is a barcode reader. Cell phone is a store guide. For example, the canned peas are two aisles to your left. That's coming very, very soon from in-store Wi-Fi. Cell phone is an eBay or Amazon portal, God help you. Mandatory manufacturer syncing. I've got to send my email addresses and all my contacts to Google before they put them on my phone for me. Retail object recognition. I take a picture of a can of peas, there's no barcode, doesn't matter, Google goggles knows it's a can of peas, just as good. Backup of all data to the manufacturer, not just Google, Apple. Default on locators. Cell phones are never turned off, never, 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 never. You all know this stuff, but I just wanna throw one thing out to you. NYPD, if you happen to get arrested here in New York, NYPD, in addition to taking your fingerprints and your DNA, will take your cell phone serial number. 
new practice NYPD. Very smart, kind of obnoxious. Oh, by the way, just so you know, your entire cell phone location history available to the FBI without a warrant. It's not your information. It's the phone company's information. It's their business records. John Q. special agent walks into Sprint and says, I want Bob's location history for the past month. Sprint is perfectly able to go, here you go. And by the way, if you read the newspaper, the Newsweek article where they stole my title, they talk about it in excruciating detail. The FBI appears to have begun using a novel form of electronic surveillance in criminal investigations, remotely activating a cell phone's microphone and using it to eavesdrop on nearby conversations. This technique is called a roving bug and was approved by top US DOJ officials. Actually, that's not what a roving bug is. A roving bug is that they wiretap every phone you use everywhere. This is a different type of a roving bug. And by the way, there are guys in prison right now, mob guys that they did this to in the Southern District. GPS, 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 tells me where you are 24 seven, tells me where your car is 24 seven. Does it work real world? It absolutely works. If you're on probation for a DWI in certain places in California, you have to wear a collar, the uh, ankle collar, that reports if you're going into a bar or renting a car. If you are a truant, in Dallas County, Texas, it reports your location to the truant officer. And I really like this. Here's like all of the students right there. And then you have one guy who's like in a little cop outfit. That's the truant officer. <laughs> that is the size of a new GPS chip that's been set up by, that's, been, uh, that's being manufactured by Epson. They can even put what's called GPS dust on somebody. I can go by you, throw a handful of this crap onto you, goes in your pocket, it goes in your seams, I go away, I can track you. GPS dust, you heard it here first, this is a current law enforcement technique. GPS dust, ooh, scary shit. Oh, I had this screen up in 2008, a final word regarding location reporting. Cell phones, get ready for location broadcasting etiquette and divorces inspired by cell phone beacons, for example, looped. I underestimated. Here's a guy who decided he was gonna kill his wife, uses the cell phone, tracks her down to where she is with the boyfriend. Uh, Texas seems to be in the lead of all this cool stuff. Other ways to track you, TiVo, cable, TiVo selling your data, money. I, don't, I mean, that's old stuff. I don't need to tell you about credit cards and PayPal. Now, this is gonna be some of the final stuff. Marketing. People wanna sell you stuff. The whole purpose is to own, know and own your eyeballs. Everything that you do goes into a massive marketing database. There are only a few big companies now. All the little marketing couple companies have been gobbled up. Every magazine subscription, every toll-free call, every product survey or product registration, every cell card that you use, cell phone card, every login, every website visit, every friend, every group, this all goes into your profile. It tells me and them your likes, your dislikes, your habits, your religion, your politics, your sexual orientation. By the way, even if, you're, even if you're offline, think about what these magazines tell me about whoever subscribes to them. Inc., Strategy and Business, Game Informer, Ecologist, Wine Spectator, Bark, Cat Fancier, Dog Fancier. You buy Cat Fancier, you own a cat. Skateboarding, Ski, Golf. You buy Ski Magazine, you ski. Gun Digest, you own a gun. Football, you not only like soccer, but you speak Spanish. Hebe, you're Jewish. Psychotherapy, you're either a psychotherapist or a nut. <laughs> there are actual magazines no, called Paranoia, UFO, and of course, ones that I've subscribed to, Mad Magazine and Crack Magazine. There's also a magazine called Paz. 
honest to God, if you are HIV positive. I, I mean, that marketing list is a pretty dangerous thing, but it exists. Here's an example of some old school marketing lists. Caught in a pickle. These are people who can't, this is what the obnoxious marketing companies name these lists. Caught in a pickle. These are people who can't pay their bills. Credit amigos. That's Hispanic people who need money fast. <laughs> Honest to God, it is. It's nasty. Five star investors. Morons that will buy into any financial deal. Outdoorsmen, people who go to Cabela's and you know, Bass Pro and all of that. Here is the scariest marketing list. Astrology success, I'm gonna read this to you verbatim. Astrology success customers have responded to a direct mail solicitation offering angelic intervention as a means for achieving financial and personal success. It's an idiot list. It's a list, <laughs> it's a list of 60,000 idiots who believe that you can have an angel pray for them. How many of the people in this room have heard of, of Information America? Even in this room, less than 10%. Info USA, Information of Amer America, they are bigger, more intrusive than any credit card company. You've never heard of them. They know everything about you. They buy up every public record, bankruptcy data, tax lien data. They buy up every marketing list, every real property record. They have an unbelievably detailed, unbelievably detailed, 240 so-called data points on every single adult in America. They even, they even suck down all the change of address records. Here's two of their lists. Suffering seniors, I mean, they have the most obnoxious names. That's elderly people with cancer. Oldies but goodies, 500,000 gamblers who are screwed over the age of 55. They can get down to that granular level. Black, blacklist, gay list, Hispanic list, Asian American list. If you want a list of black, Asian, gay people, they can give it to you. Now let me give you two examples. These are old school examples. These are real old school examples. First guy is a subscriber to Soldier of Fortune, American Rifleman, Washington Times. He purchased the Force of Reason. He's a registered Republican and he's listed in Focus USA's Christian donor list. What do you know about this guy? He's a right wing Christian, probably ex-military gun owner. You don't have to be a genius. You can extrapolate out to that. You have a window into this guy's soul. Next guy, subscriber to the Village Voice, High Times, Cat Fancier, purchased Chomsky, the weasel, latest book. He's a registered Green Party member and he's contributed to the UJA, Gay Men's Health Crisis, and American Friends of Peace Now. What do you know about this guy? Say again? Gay, yuppie, Jewish pothead. Now, by the way, how do you know he's gay? Let me tell you, not, not, no, 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 that's right. Not because he contributed to gay men's health crisis, but because he lives alone with a cat. <laughs> now, that was then, this is now. Now, subject downloads podcasts from Air America, which is dead, but never mind. Downloads podcasts from Air America, reads daily costs, online search of voter registration records, tells me who he's registered with, the Green Party. FTC contributions online, tells me the liberal candidates he gives money to. Uh, Amazon.com shows he purchases certain products. Gay travel blog, Catster, by the way, there's really a site called Catster, God help us. <laughs> All of this from his online activity. Do you all get it? This is called psychographics or micro-targeting or the big sort. Micro-targeting, you're the target. Not because people want to crawl up your posterior, but because people want to sell you stuff and the more they know about you, the more they can sell to you, and the more they can influence who you vote for, and the more they can get your contributions. It's ridiculous what they know. Bourbon drinkers are disproportionately Republican, which in my case is true. I like Michters. Anybody wants to give me a gift. 
Gin drinkers and clear liquids like white wine, meaning wussies, are disproportionately Democrats. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I know that this room is like 97% Democrat. Average, the average American has nine friends, drinks milk from the cereal bowl, eats 25 pounds of candy a year, has lost 12 teeth by age 50 because of the 25 pounds of candy, and prefers smooth peanut butter over chunky. They know everything, everything. In the last election, if you liked butter, white wine, Fig Newtons, fruit-filled cookies, red lobster, and Volvo and yoga, you were a Hillary backer 10 to one. Olive oil, bare naked granola, latte to go. Cheesecake factory, Panera, Starbucks, you're an old blah blah backer. Bourbon, stuffed crust pizza, I don't like this, fiber one. <laughs> Hardee's, Fud Ruckers, BMW, and own a gun, McCain. Probably depends also, but never mind. Sorry, sorry, sorry. One thing I want to tell you. When I started doing this, I found out about the scariest thing. You want to talk about extrapolating from remote info? You all know that the uh, Volkswagen Beetle went out of production for a while. <clears throat> when they wanted to bring it back into production, they said, our last buyers, you know, we, we lost track of them. That was 12, 15 years ago. How do we find people that are going to buy the bug? God knows how they found out. I mean, they're Germans. They, they're good with records. So they found out. <laughs> hey, I'm Jewish. I get one shot against Germans every talk. I'm allowed one shot. That's my last shot. Some of my best friends are German. Actually, actually that's really true. That's really true. Um, somehow, God, God bless their little you know, pointy heads because of the helmet they wear. No, God bless. <laughs> you know, I got to stop because we're running out of time and I could go on like this for an hour. They discovered, so help me, if you like chunky peanut butter as opposed to the smooth and you own a cat, you are four times, if these two things exist in your marketing profile, you are four times as likely to buy a bug. They brought up all the chunky peanut butter lists, all the cat lists, Cross-reference, anybody who appeared on both lists, they marketed their ass off, and it worked. That's why if you go to the Jetta page, they ask you things like, is lunch more important than breakfast or dinner? Do you sleep less because of time spent on the internet? Do you prefer to shop with your friends? Uh, guys, what the hell does this have to do with buying a car? We know what it has to do with it. <laughs> okay, okay, two jokes, two jokes. Let me give you one wild ass example and then I gotta page through this because I wanna do drones and then we'll take Q&A. Canadian Tire decided to analyze every piece of information collected from its credit card transactions. They're a huge chain in Canada. Um, they issue their own credit card. They know everything about everybody. They are bigger than Walmart in Canada. Data indicated that people who bought cheap generic automotive oil were much more likely to miss a credit card payment than people who got the expensive name brand stuff. Okay, that's kind of intuitive. People who bought carbon monoxide monitors for their homes or those little felt pads that stop chair legs from scratching the floor almost never missed payments. Because they were anal retentive people. <laughs> Not hard to figure out. Anyone who purchased, and this is where it gets great, anyone who purchased a chrome skull car accessory or a mega thruster exhaust system was likely to miss paying his bill eventually. They could tell the riskiest drinking establishment in Canada, Sharks Pool Bar in Montreal, where 47% of the patrons who use their Canadian tire card miss four payments over a year. Basically, you go, you have a beer in Sharks, and your Canadian tire credit card credit limit disappears to nothing. <laughs> it's amazing. They can do this now. Again, all of these things are to sell you stuff, but all of them eat away your privacy. There's an outfit called Rapleaf. Check it out. 
amazing. Rapleaf, R-A-P-L-E-A-F. I'm going to zip through this. I use Rapleaf. Everybody who wants to invade your privacy, including me, uses Rapleaf. It tells me everything that I want to know about somebody using the net. What sites you visit, what your Facebook profile is like, what your MySpace profile is like. Database milestones. It wasn't long ago when Rapleaf only had data on a handful of, full of people. Oh, boo-hoo. Today, with our people database growing rapidly, we have insight, good euphemism, we have insight into over 375 million consumers, including their demographics, psychographics, social network, so on and so on and so on. You get it? One stop shopping to invade your privacy. Now, Rapleaf, discover who your customers are, what they care about, so on and so forth. Consider this homework. Professor Rombaum can't tell you everything. Research this yourself. Now, here's another program. They are the lowest form of life. They are sleaze. They gather up stuff they have no right to. I'm not going to tell you who they are, but I'm going to show you what they do. Here they have a guy's name, address, home phone number, everybody he lives with, their photos. I just want to read you the basic profile without comment. White, married, tradesman, hobbies of sports, outdoors, travel, music, and reading. Residence is a single family home worth more than a million. He's a male, he's a Pisces, he has children, he has some college, he's a homeowner, he's lived there 17 years, and he plays sports, he plays football, he enjoys NASCAR, loves to travel, loves music, likes R&B music, soft rock, reads cooking books, reads about interior decoration, reads about sports, subscribes to magazines, cares about healthy living, owns pets like cars, rides a motorcycle over there, enjoys cruises, enjoys gardening, enjoys food and wine, and more and more and more and more and more and more. That's a typical profile. These guys are incompetent clowns. They really are. And that's what they're capable of doing. Enough said, right? This is without talking about companies like ChoicePoint, Accurate, Sysant, which by the way are now all one major privacy invading company called LexisNexis, which God bless their little hearts, they're in business to make money, so I and every other private investigator and every used car salesman and every store owner and every idiot with a business phone number has access to your information. And they buy up every single public record, every single criminal record. They suck down every single credit record. They suck down every business record. They cross-reference with Dun and Brad. They buy accident reports. They buy birth certificates. They buy resident data. They buy, oh, marketing information. They buy technical data. And so on and so on and so on and so on and so on. They have gobbled up hundreds of companies as their wholly owned subsidiaries. I've seen their complete report. It's almost a thousand pages long on a subject that I did. Now, a lot of this stuff is repeated. A lot of it is, you know, what addresses they lived at and who lived at the address with them and stuff like that. But a thousand pages. A thousand, oh, more companies they own. Now, by the way, I just want to throw this out there. For those of you who play uh, massive multiplaying games, if you think I can't tell what you're into by your avatar, not to mention following your online activity and second life and whatnot, you're wrong. And what do I know as an investigator? I know people are more honest when they're playing Sims online or Second Life or something like that than they are in meat space, so to speak. Here's a woman who went berserk after somebody killed off her virtual ex-husband. Here's a woman who, because her husband had an affair in Second Life, she divorced him in real life. People really care about this stuff. And millions and tens of millions use it. Now, lively, Google's version of this died, but what they said is absolutely true. 
If you enter a lively room embedded on your favorite blog or website, you can immediately get a sense of the room's creator's interest just by looking at the furniture, blah, blah, blah. Which means I look at your avatar, I look at what you do in Second Life and whatnot, and I own you. Now, we're gonna talk about cameras real quick. We're about 10 minutes behind schedule, so I gotta do this really fast. Before I do cameras, I wanna show you what cameras are capable of. There's a guy who covered the Obama inauguration, and he homebrewed something that he called Gigapan. And it's not megapixels, it's gigapixels. The equivalent was 1,474 megapixels, 1,474 megapixels, or 1 1.4 gigapixels. Unbelievable. And here's what he did. If you go to his website, Gigapan, you can scroll from there, scroll in, scroll in, and that's what you can get. It's get crazier. Look at that, scroll to that. Now, here's the whole Obama inauguration. From that crowd, I was able to scroll into these discrete faces. In case you think I'm making this up, let me, in case you think I'm making it up, when you go home, go to gigapan.com, do it yourself, but let me show it to you live. So when I tell you cameras are watching you, you understand what that means. Wait till we talk about analytics. Here's what it means. Okay, look, you can't see nothing, scrolling in. This is gonna take a second because I did it on a slow Mac. Come on, refresh. <laughs> can't see anything. The funny thing is, I'll tell you this to save time, I tried to pick out two really sinister, nefarious, crooked looking guys as if I was doing an investigation and I scrolled in on them and you're gonna see two guys. You see those pins they're wearing? I showed this, I did this to a group of federal law enforcement officers and uh, <laughs> a buddy of mine in the audience says to me, you're right, they are criminals, they're members of Congress. <laughs> but I gotta tell you, these are sinister, wait till, wait till I scroll in on them, it's adjusting. I mean, these, these guys look like mob guys. But they're, but they're members of Congress. I can tell who these guys are. And just for comparison, look at that, look at that. That's what commercial cameras can do now. Imagine what the feds can do. You need to understand cameras are everywhere. I've been using this since almost the first hope. 1998 in New York around Bryant Square, 129 cameras a square mile. Annoying but not terrible. 2003, 396, 2008, 1200. There are now 3,900 cameras in the square mile around Bryant Park. Oh God, really? Oh crap, okay. Uh, he's telling me, first of all, I've got 10 minutes. Let me show you, if there isn't a camera, there's drones, and I want to show you two drones. Now, by the way, this is a cyborg that DARP is putting together. It's a real moth with a camera and a control implanted. Yeah, honest to God. But let me, this is a drone that can fly forever. This is called Devil Ray. When it needs to recharge, it drops two uh, wires, hits a, a high tension wire, sucks up the energy, takes off. These are real things. This is a uh, drone that can fit in a briefcase. You open it up and it takes off. Um, this is the NYPD, they have cameras now that can look into a car and see what's going on from two kilometers away, which is far enough that it's silent. Now let me show you disturbing video number one. This is an Air Force Micro video. Micro Air Vehicles, or MAVs, will play an important role in future warfare. The urban battlefield calls for tools to increase the warfighter's situational awareness and capacity to engage rapidly, precisely, and with minimal collateral damage. MAVs will be integrated into future Air Force layered sensing systems. These systems may be airdropped or hand launched depending on the mission requirements. The small size of MAVs allows them to be hidden in plain sight, once in place, 
an MAV can enter a low-powered extended surveillance mode for missions lasting days or weeks. This may require the MAV to harvest energy from environmental sources, such as sunlight or wind, or from man-made sources, such as power lines and vibrating machinery. It will blend in with its surroundings and operate undetected. MAVs will use micro-sensors and microprocessor technology to navigate and track targets through complicated terrain, such as urban areas. An MAV operating in urban terrain will have more agility challenges than larger UAVs. Obstructions can cause wind gusts, even on a calm day. One way to overcome this is to learn from examples in nature and use flapping wings to fly. Sensing an oncoming gust, feedback control directs the wings to flap asymmetrically, compensating for the wind. Small size and agile flight will enable MAVs to covertly enter locations Watch inaccessible this. by traditional means of aerial surveillance. MAVs will use new forms of navigation, such as a vision-based technique called optic flow. This system remains robust when traditional methods, such as GPS, are unavailable. All right, you get the idea. Multiple I got to save MAVs. time. Let me show you the next video. This is commercially available stuff from MIT. Watch what this quad rotor can do. Do me a favor, put the light down. This video presents autonomous control capabilities for a quad rotor helicopter. Watch we use a 20 stuff. camera Vicon system and an onboard IMU for state estimation. Here we show single, double, and triple flips. Watch it go through a window. We developed a method for flying to any position in space with any reasonable velocity or pitch angle. We use the method to fly through windows at various angles. Here there. Okay, you get the idea. These are prevalent all over New York now. Police cameras. I'm going to zoom through. I mean, so much stuff to cover. So much stuff. What you have to understand is all of these cameras are mated with facial recognition, onboard analytics. I know that there's somebody who spoke earlier and said that facial recognition can be defeated. It absolutely cannot. There are algorithms right now. Let me give you an example, by the way, of analytics. The camera's job is to tell what you're doing. Are you walking up and down a supermarket aisle looking for something? Are you in a fight? Are you surveilling a protected location? Latest use, they use it for schoolyards. Uh, the problem with this is the camera that they're using for this example is primarily used for monitoring prison yards. So if you look up here, they show one of the little kids making a break for it. <laughs> so, you know, study, playing, eating. And they're very upfront about it. Ohio State says, we care what you do. Facial recognition. 37 states now do facial recognition software cross-reference with their driver's license database. You're a wanted felon, they cross-reference with the DL database. Every single passport you apply for, now in the US subjected to facial recognition. It's good enough that when University of Colorado had a smoke in, 100 people smoking pot on the quad, 98 of them were identified from student ID photos and facial recognition. Now, I don't believe this headline. Students registered delight at the new face fit check-in. I doubt they registered delight, but when you go to school, it tells if you're playing hooky or not by checking your face. Real world. Just for greens, Massachusetts DMV, when they were implementing facial recognition on their, on their driver's license photo program, they grabbed from America's Most Wanted some wanted photos. They ran it against the Massachusetts DMV database. They caught the guy. This is becoming the wave of the future. I, I, I love the two things in this article. First of all, the guy says, we are now telling everybody in their driver's license photos, neutral expression, please. Easiest to do facial recognition. And the head of the DMV says, DMV is not a place where there's an expectation of privacy. I, I mean, competence either, but definitely not <laughs> privacy. Facial recognition, caught fraudsters with multiple driver's licenses. 
Feds caught a fraudster in North Carolina. Now, real, real, real world. Quick show of hands, who knows what this is from? Okay, for those of you who don't, Mossad decided to, supposedly, decided to whack out somebody in Dubai. And they sent a bunch of people there with false passports. The people did all sorts of interesting trade craft. They were going to one hotel, change their appearance, go into the second hotel, change it more, go into the third. Facial recognition allowed these people to be tracked from hotel to hotel to hotel and match to passports. And they identified them all. This is the person in the hotel. That's her passport photo. Here's the broadcast. Watch this. Who are the men dressed in tennis outfits getting into a Dubai hotel lift with Hamas commander Mahmoud al Mahu? That's what police and intelligence agencies are trying to figure out. A few hours after the CCTV footage was filmed, Mahu was murdered. Interpol has issued arrest notices for 11 suspects who are traveling on European passports from Britain, Ireland, France and Germany. The passports appear to be forgeries, several belonging to Israelis with dual nationality. That has fueled speculation that the Israeli intelligence... The point is they were able to take just hotel video and other video and match it to driver's licenses. And this is not just government. We can do this ourselves. We were asked by a television program to see if we could match the Illinois Deadbeat Dad database, or website rather, to MySpace and Facebook photos. Here's one guy. Here's another guy. And by the way, if you want to know why he's so tired and so broke, the difference between the two photos, here's his MySpace friends. Here's another. And we did sex offenders in Texas. We matched about 300 of them. Here's a sex offender we matched. There's his MySpace page. There's a sex offender page. Here's another one. Here's a really outrageous one. He used his MySpace, he used his sex offender mugshot as his MySpace page. <laughs> Honest to God. Um, if you go to my company's website, you'll see that about six weeks ago we caught another almost 300 uh, sex offenders using MySpace, a lot of them friending young kids. So let's say you wear a disguise. Facial recognition can be beat. Not true. Here's an algorithm that if even 5% of your face is visible, they can do so-so match. Here's something, this is amazing. Compressed sensing, they can take a crappy pixelated one minute. Um, guy with the one minute sign, what do I do? Just cut it in the middle? No, 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 no. I don't want to screw the next speaker. No, I'm not going to screw the next speaker. Is the next speaker here? Will he give me 15 minutes? Can I get 15 minutes from you? Okay. Let me see if there's anything I really want to show you. You know, there's a ton of good stuff, <laughs> which I'm going to flip through. Ah, we'll talk about that. <laughs> oh, from The Wire, I love this. <laughs> um, here's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna go right into Q&A. I wanna introduce these people very quick. This is Reggie Montgomery. Reggie Montgomery is a former law enforcement officer, and a good one, and a highly decorated one. He is today a private investigator and my colleague. Uh, he teaches a lot of tech stuff. And um, let me do this, let me put up a help page. First of all, let me tell you there's a product which we're gonna be demoing, come to the table, you can play with it all you want. Uh, oh boy, I would love to talk about this guy, the Royal Prince, can't do that. I'm just gonna put contact up there. Reggie is a current private investigator. This is Bruce Sackman. Bruce Sackman is a former supervisory special agent. He is currently a private investigator. He is also the director of SPY, the Society of Professional Investigators, which if you are a law enforcement officer or an investigator, I would urge you to talk to this guy. It's one of the best fraternal and educational associations in the country. I'm on the board. It meets in New York on a regular basis, and it's 
unbelievable the resources it makes available. This is Efrat Cohen, she's on the spy board. Uh, she's an investigator in New Jersey and in Florida. Between the three of them, they are uh, about 40 times smarter than I am and they're gonna help me with the Q&A. Can, can we do, there's a, there's a mic here. First of all, whoever's operating these lights, I'm gonna go blind. <laughs> can we dim these? God bless you, okay. <laughs> I had a question and a comment. The question is, when we use the Internet Explorer, it has the privacy side of Internet Explorer. How is that helping then? Meaningless. Really? Yeah, meaningless. Meaningless. All right, the second question is, <laughs> we are talking here about that Google is bad, Google can do this, Google can do that. This is like uh, talking about how Starbucks is a bad coffee, it's too expensive, we can't afford it, and then yet uh, taking the same Starbucks coffee every day to work in the morning. I mean. Okay, yes, I agree. They're both idiots. What was your question? But the question is that, that if we're talking so much against Google, but yet we're using Google, how is it still a bad idea, though? We're using Google to get information about almost everything that's on the Internet right now. Let, let, me, let me just say this very quickly because this is not a question. I'm looking for actual questions. Oh. You're asking for an opinion. And let me tell you, none of us are here to express opinions. We're not telling you what to think. We're just telling you what to think about. You need to be aware of this. Most people are not aware of these various things. Uh, I apologize that we had to cut, cut short. I guess we have time for two, three, four more questions before this guy you know, kills, kills us. Um, I just want you to be aware you are screwed. Privacy is dead. And you decide what you want to do about it. Next question, and please ask something that applies to the whole panel. An investigative question or whatnot. Uh, I'm familiar with peer-to-peer uh, -peer, uh, DMCA cases in which uh, the uh, charges against the defendant was dropped because uh, his IP address wasn't sufficient information uh, to convict him of his crime. Um, as uh, the years pass and uh, digital identifiers come up um, in different cases, uh, to what extent do they hold up in court? For example, a uh, post you make on a website where someone else could have your computer, someone else um, could have your cell phone, um, uh, as part of uh, criminal, uh, criminal nice. investigations? I handle this all the time. Well, as part of this, uh, there's a profile. And if you're in that house, and like he said, they'll check your phone. So if you were looking up porno sites or, or um, uh, child uh, pornography, pornography sites, and your phone is, happens to be sitting right next to you, hello. Okay, so it's mostly about cross-referencing? Well, it, 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 you, you can't prosecute about. somebody on one single piece of data. Mm -hmm. And the same way there's identity theft in meat space, there's identity theft, and there will be and can be identity theft even with a cyber identifier. Your cyber you can be, can be stolen also. Nobody's going to prosecute you based on one identifier. But once that happens, and it will, and this current administration, federal administration, very much wants to do that, you'll just be extra screwed. Next question. Thank you. You're very welcome. So we can't stay out of the databases. What about muddying the waters, you know, generating noise, false, false extraneous data? I, I, I don't know, guys. Are any of you fooled by extraneous data? Uh, you can try to do that, but it's going to be found out. There's a pattern that I set up. No, like Steve said, you're not going to be prosecuted on, on one piece of time. They're going to profile you. If, if there's a six foot six Afri African American guy living in an apartment, and suddenly, magically, there's a six foot six African American guy living in that same apartment with a new name, how's that going to help? There's too many things cross reference. And I can tell you, when you come over to the table, let me run what's called a gorilla trace search on you. You'll see, just by plugging in your info, we can pull up hundreds of pages of open store stuff on Sir? Uh, you cited a lot of resources that you can use to look up things. Have you done anything to sort of consolidate those and make it all one fluid thing? That was all. We, we all use the combined data reports. I mean, you can talk about that. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I, I use Steve's website. <laughs> Steve's <laughs> website is the combined source that I use all the time. We have a combo report. You put in a name, address, telephone Hi. number, and <laughs> That heckling was deserved. Uh, we have something called a combo report, which come to the table. I'll run one on you. You plug in your name, address, telephone number, date of birth, social security number, 
and it spits back a multi-hundred page report. Hey, Steve, I just want to say something quickly. Criminal prosecutions don't exclusively come from this electronic data, okay? This electronic right. data and this forensics is basically the icing on the cake. The cake still has to be built okay. the old-fashioned way. Okay. Going out, seeing things, talking to people, doing the old-fashioned kind of investigations, okay? This elect all, all the electronic stuff that Steve went through is phenomenal. It makes our job a lot easier. But to get a criminal prosecution exclusively on this is very difficult, almost impossible. Okay, guys, one more question. I was told this is the last question, and the truth is I've really taken advantage of the next speaker, so this is the last question. Directed, directed to the panel. No. All right, folks, I know that you're, you're good. It was great. Holy cow. We're, we're bringing you downstairs. The endurance test has been passed. You're all inductees in the Army. Welcome. These guys, these guys are brilliant. They're going to be at the table with me. Come, come to the table. We need to get out of this next speaker's way or he'll have me kill I'll tell you right now, Steve is heading uh, directly downstairs to the vendor area, sort of near the elevator. And by um, the way, his talk is going to be great. He's a foyer guy. Uh, but he says stick around for uh, this next guy also. So you have to be in both places at once. But what we're